Hello YouTube audience. Hello, today we're going to discuss the continuum hypothesis and why I believe that it is valid if we consider certain key assumptions. Now Paul Cohen has proven that the continuum hypothesis is undecidable with respect to the set theory axioms as they have been laid out. However, I believe there are additional axioms that I would say are logical and self-evident that would affirm the continuum hypothesis. Now, I would like to lay those out for your consideration today. I ask that you listen to this with a closed mind. That's right, a closed mind. Now, those of you who are the vast majority of those who are professional mathematicians do not believe in the continuum hypothesis. That is a statement of fact. I ask that those people listen with a closed mind and consider this with a closed mind, a skeptical mind, and see if logic uh, can apply to this argument. Let's begin with what we agree upon. In other words, the vast majority of mathematicians will agree, this is Cantor's work and not mine, this is his proof that the natural numbers are, that the rational numbers, all rational numbers, are countable with respect to natural numbers, however counterintuitive that might be. Now, it, this is a general review for the general audience. I know that many of you know this already, and I don't intend to insult your intelligence, uh, but we'll just review this very briefly. We have one, uh, one which would be 1 over 1. We're going to basically lay out every single rational number that can possibly exist with a general formula here. We have 1, 1 half, 1 third, 1 fourth, 1 fifth to infinity, 2 over 1, 2 over 2, 2 over 3, 2 over 4 to infinity, 3 over 1, 3 over 2, 3 over 3, 3 over 4 to infinity, and then all the way down 1, 2 over 1, 3 over 1, 4 over 1, 5 over 1, 6 over 1 to infinity. You can see how every single rational number we could possibly have will be placed here more than once, in fact, because obviously 1 half is equivalent to 2 fourths and so forth, but that's not the important point here. What Cantor showed is that we can match each rational number with a natural number with a simple one-to-one -one correspondence. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and then so forth, um, essentially pairing every single fraction or any, any type of rational number with a numerator over denominator with a corresponding natural number. Now you can look at this as a one-to-one -one correspondence between n, which would be our natural numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, with uh, our triangular numbers, because as you can see, we have 1, and then 1 plus 2 is 3, and then 3 plus 3 is 6, and then uh, 6 plus 4 is 10, 15, 21, so forth. Uh, you can also look at it that way. Uh, and, and that, yes, indeed, you will have a one-to-one -one correspondence there. Finally, uh, we've proven uh, we've proven that there's a one-to-one -one correspondence to, or instead of a one-to-one -one correspondence, we'll say a level of countability. Uh, you can also put it here, one, two, three, four, five, six. And sure enough, the one will have the same level of countability as all rational numbers between one and two, uh, and then this next one will have the same level of countability as uh, between 2 and 3. You can see, um, although it's counterintuitive, you can see that 1 has the same level of countability as all rational numbers between 1 and 2. So if you don't see that when you're counting it by finite steps, but when you arrive at infinity, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, to infinity, there's the same... Uh, level of countability as all the rational numbers that you've skipped over in 